The man almost had a good nade on me. So he's definitely on the far right side. I've kind of moved all the way left here. Let's see. Might already be too late to go up the middle. I'm gonna go more left. Oh shit. It's already above us. Oh boy. Got him. Oh. That was a close one, sir. Welcome back, Raiders. Today we're going through a bit of outdoor shoreline. Now, honestly, one of my favorite play styles in Tarkov is hunting players with long range sniping. So, naturally, Shoreline has a great design for this, it has multiple choke point areas and areas for you to rotate for alternative angles. It's also a great map to get those 100 meter kills. So, if you're on quests like Shooterboard in Heaven or Calibration, learning how to play Shoreline outside can be very useful for you. I'm currently working on Calibration as well, so I'm trying to get 100 meter kills. So, for today's raids, I'm going to kind of walk through how to play Shoreline outside as I was getting my 100 meter kills. So I hope you guys enjoy this. No! I must panic there. So I actually ran up on this engagement a little too early. I actually thought they were behind the hill, but they were actually on top. So they saw me coming a mile away. These guys definitely spawned a tunnel, whereas I kind of spawned near cottage, and I just bolted over. So they actually were smart to look back and check to see if anyone else was coming towards them. Now I jumped over the hill, so they actually don't know if I went back towards cottage or maybe I went to power or something. Anything on the left side of this hill. So we're going to do a big flank here and I'm going to try and come at them from directly behind them. But hopefully with a little time, they might even just push forward. Need a painkiller first. Mm -mm. <sighs> we know there's two of them, chat, and we don't know where they went. My guess is they went to the left. Got him! Dude, I missed the second shot. You gotta be kidding me. How? Oh my god, I'm just bad. Okay. Okay, a couple of missed shots here. I was using a new build with the M700, so I didn't quite have the drop off that I was expecting on that run. So he jumped the road here, so he might actually be coming up to the wall, maybe even coming all the way to power to get a flank on me. So we're just going to control this hill. I know that the right side is completely clear. I'm moving over to the left here, just see if I can catch him. Okay, no visual at this point. He might have actually gone back. Might have feigned to be. Gone back for the body. So we're going to have to wrap around and check the body again. That's the guy that I killed over there. Wait. Somebody coming up? That's a different dude. 
So this is another guy that rolled up. He might have actually killed the partner of the dude I was hunting first, but this guy is a different dude. It's hiding right behind the car. I think he wants the body that I looted. Or he might have already got it too when I was moving up. When you're playing solo on Shoreline, it's definitely hard to loot all the bodies. Or you have to be very patient at least. Sometimes being the first to loot a body is not the most ideal situation. There's 10 to 13 players on Shoreline, so keep an eye. There's always going to be another one. And sometimes if you're not the first one to loot, it gives them a sense of false security, giving you another opportunity for another kill. Please tell me I got him. Let's get some stamina back. Let's check the gun. It's all good. No cheeky here. We're just gonna clear up this left side here. That we can loot those bodies. Oh shit! He's still alive? What? Where'd he go? Okay, well. <laughs> I thought he was dead. We gotta loot quick, actually. I don't know who took those shots back there, but there's somebody. So for a little context here, I did fast forward. Uh, but I heard some shots down at Blue Fence just a little while back down the road. So we gotta be quick here. We gotta loot. We gotta move. I don't think these guys... Oh, jeez. Scared the crap out of me. Look at that. So he did kill the second guy. So the second guy must have looted his friend when we repositioned to the far left side of the hill. And then we came back and found this dude. Two backpacks here, so he probably looted his friend. So yeah, well, we repositioned to the left. He got his friend stuff. Okay, we're running out of time here. Okay, that's it from those two bodies. That's all we need. That guy was pretty much stripped. Screw the SCM. We are heavy right now. We are extremely heavy. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna use an SJ6. This will give me a little bit more stamina. A max stamina so I can I can actually run for a little bit longer. I don't really wanna tempt fate. Let's take a snack break here. I don't wanna tempt fate here, but <laughs> I might actually have a temp fate. Thank you, Rockwell. So I made a grave error here. And you guys are going to see this in just a moment. But he was looking to the left there. If you notice that, the scav was actually looking a little bit left. And remember before I said there were shots. I actually forgot that there was a player coming up here. So unfortunately, I died. So take it from my experience here. It probably would have been wiser to go up to weathering. We knew that there was a guy coming. That scav was shooting at him. We should have flanked far left. Gone up to weathering or something. Maybe we could have even taken him out from up there. That would have been the better play. So here's another way with my good friend Combat Wombat. This is kind of the angle that you want to hold if you're on top of weathering. A lot of players generally like to come along the road here or in the little ditches. And from up top, you can actually see a great amount. You gotta be shitting me. I hit the rock here. 
Are they at the uh, wood cabin? Broken house. Oh, they hit me. I think I might have got him. Can't really confirm. They know where I am. Go far left. Far left? Okay. To go I don't back know if to kill that guy or not. This is me. Yep. There are a couple of small little gaps in the rocks that you can kind of peek through. I would highly recommend trying to find these small ones. Don't take any of the big open spaces because it's actually a lot easier for people in the bushes down below to look up and see your shadow and your silhouette compared to you looking down on them. So you got to find the small little rocks to right peak. I'm gonna go down, flank him. Yeah, he moved, I think, left. If you have a duo in this situation, it's actually very helpful to keep one above and one below. They're gonna keep their eyes and attention on the guys on top, right? They're gonna keep looking for us on top. So me coming down, gives us another angle that we can potentially get them or pinch them from. I wonder if he sent his friend to come up here. Oh, that's actually possible. He could distract him with the gunshots while his friend's going far left. Yeah. Watch behind you. You see him at all? No. Are you running? Oh, he's moving on the road. He's dead. Oh, nice shot. Nice shot. I think I killed his friend. I think we traded shots. Why would he just book it like this? I, I don't know. Okay, make your way down and then we'll... We'll yep. push on the other guy that I shot. This makes no sense. There's no way he would run here without... If you didn't have a partner. Dead body. Oh my god, I hit that shot! Nice, nice shot. Woo. M1A. Let's go, oh, that dude. dude at an M1A? Damn. So that's about it for this one, Raiders. I just wanted to show you guys a little perspective of being on top of weathering. The rest of this raid, we basically just exited up here and got out, so not too much left in this one. So that's about it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.